I took custody of Paige at a very young age. It was life changing. I always felt, you know, the need to make sure she was successful at whatever she did because she made me successful of being a dad. So growing up, I played soccer. I was a forward and I would get impatient when I wouldn't get the ball. I was just a ball hog. I would score a lot of goals, but my team was never very happy. And I just remember thinking, even at a young age, that I didn't want to put my disappointment on someone else. I wanted to play an individual sport. I played disc golf at the time. Disc golf also saved me. Uh, I loved it. I was addicted to it. I had her out on the course when she could walk four, basically at four. She was already, I was pushing her around half the time. She was throwing. So disc golf wasn't something that I was in love with right away. It was really my dad's passion and he just brought me out there with him. But I liked the way the disc flew and I was intrigued, but my attention span wasn't good enough to get through the 18 holes, especially considering they weren't really waiting for me or being very courteous. I was still competing, you know, locally at that point in time. By the time she was 10, she was getting, uh, she's in like two, 200 feet, you know, 215, 220. By the time she was 12, she was out driving us, clearly. Uh, after she was 12, I pretty much gave up on me. It was sell your disc golf collection, let's go to Worlds, let's, let's compete. At the time, I looked up to Des Redding. Of course, at that age, I wasn't playing against her, but I was watching her and just aspiring to be that great one day. It, it seemed like a little kid's dream, but I thought maybe I could do it. Around the time I was 16 in 2007, this one tournament sticks out to me big time, the Carrollton Open. I remember placing third, narrowly behind Des Redding. And I was so excited, like every fiber in me was just joyful. My dad sat me down and told me that I couldn't take the cash. I was not gonna move up to pro yet because he wanted me to become an amateur world champion. I basically intentionally hit her from the PDGA. <laughs> I felt that, you know, a kid her age, that could be detrimental. And I felt, you know, I was detrimental enough <laughs> to not have everybody else, you know, put a number on her or statistic or, you know, a tag. It just didn't feel right. My dad would caddy for me and he would notice that I was throwing past Des Redding. And she was the world distance record holder at the time. And my dad became obsessed with this. He was like, you're a farther thrower than her. We gotta get you to that world distance competition. He looked it up, he found it, it was 438 feet and he went out to this field that you can see right outside my window. And now my dad has measured off this tree that's 440 feet. So he knows if I can throw it to that tree, I've done it. We would go out there and try to push, 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 try different angles, try different ways to push off my plant leg. And one day I did it. During a distance competition at Worlds, 638.4, I mean, for a girl, nobody even came close to it. I mean, she just obliterated it. So here we are, 2007, the World Championships is in Wisconsin. I didn't win this World Championships. I got third, actually. I knew that I could do it, but I didn't. And so that ride home, my dad was a, a little harsh, you know? Second place in our house is the first loser. I knew he meant well, I knew he loves me, he supports me, but it was hard to take. I was just ready just to move up, you know? Who cares about this AM World title? I know that my sights are bigger than that. So after I got back from the 2009 Amateur World Championships, I wrote to a bunch of companies, um, but specifically Discraft was the one that I was excited about. And I remember typing this email out on my home computer in the, in the dining room. I was nervous and excited for the possibility. And I remember getting this very personalized email back and they were saying that they were gonna keep their eye on me. So I took one semester of community college, becoming a student for the first time in college, you kind of have that on your plate. Like, what do I wanna do with my life? And there's so much pressure. And then I got an offer from Eric McCabe who at the time was on Team Discraft. I talked to my dad that night and he said, do it, absolutely do it. He'll show you the ropes, he's a good guy. So my second tournament on the road was the Beaver State Fling, one of the most prestigious events on the national tour. 
I got second place to Liz Carr, only one stroke behind her. I knew that this is what I wanted to do. I was like riding this high. I was so excited and just this fire was burning inside of me. I was, I was ready to call my dad that night and tell him I'm not coming home. <laughs> I remember receiving an email back from Brian Sullivan and he had responded to the same email that I sent them where he told me he was gonna keep his eye on me. And he offered me a position on Team Discraft. And then the next year I won my first world title throwing their discs with their logo on my back. The heart she has for up-and-coming players, uh, the time she spends that she could or should be practicing um, is, you, you can't pay for that. That's a gift that God gave her, you know, just a good person all the way around. Hard to beat her. She's, she's hard to beat. Good luck trying. And these things are the reason that she's doing so well because she knows that she's a good person. That will reflect in the way you play, that will reflect in, that it comes out in your game. There's no question. Um, if you don't believe that, try it, I promise you. When I became a better dad, I became a better golfer. And there, there is no doubt about that. And I know it's working for her, I'm watching it. Most people that play disc golf are obsessed with it. It's just so easy to love. You know, watching the disc fly through trees is just like magical. And also I think in today's world, it's something where people need in their life, this outdoor therapy, you know? Try. If I could tell my 12 year old self anything, it would just be to get out to that field every day. Not two times a week, three times a week, go out there every day and dedicate your time and your energy to what you wanna do and what you love. In today's age, anything is possible. Disapproval, heartbreak, don't let those things keep you down. If disc golf is your passion, stop making excuses. Find your perfect field and get out there and perfect your craft. To see her living my dream is so much more fulfilling as a dad. I'm a lucky person.